Hey everybody, this is Fist25, and this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to go over uh, tips and tricks of how I dogfight. Um, I'm going to use a fighter ship, and I'll probably use a bigger ship as well. I'm just going to go over some of the tactics I use, because I... And by no means do I think I am a good dogfighter. I am not at all. I'm especially bad at player versus player, but I think I'm pretty good at player versus a computer. And I just see a lot of people kind of struggle with certain uh, tactics and, and ways to do some of the dogfighting in this game. And I just want to go over some, uh, some of the controls and, and how I play. Now, my setup in the game is I use uh, dual sticks, but I think the strategies here can be applied for any type of setup, whether it's mouse and keyboard, or a HOTAS, or it's dual sticks or whatever. But I use dual Thrustmaster T16,000Ms. Uh, um, and what that allows me to do is on my right stick, because I'm right-handed, that's my, my pitch axis, my yaw axis, and my roll. And then I have some of the buttons set up for main fire, secondary fire. Um, I have some of my uh, my hat switches uh, for targeting. And then I really don't use any other buttons on there, on that stick. There's a ton that are mapped to it. But uh, on my left stick, that's all thrusters, right? So strafe left, straight, strafe right is on my left stick. Uh, st um, Forward thrust and backward thrust is my uh, Y axis going up. Is forward thrust going back is backward thrust. And then my twist, uh, my left twist is to, I believe it's to twist, is to uh, actually go down. And my right twist on that left stick is to send my thrusters to make me go up. And then on, on the left, because my left stick is also my throttle, I have my afterburners tied to a button on there. And then if I double press that button, uh, it, it, it'll be my speed break, basically. Uh, I also use a program called Joy2Key. And that program is pretty neat in that it um, it lets me... Tie, like, like, I have uh, basically a, a button that lets me uh, be like a modifier. So let's say on my right stick... When I select, when I hit my missile button, uh, just like you would hit the middle mouse button on a mouse, it will lock missiles. And if I hold that button down, it'll fire. If I hold down the modifier button my, my on my left stick and I hit the missile button, it'll switch the missile type. So it allows me to use my dominant hand, my right hand, as, you know, to do most of the movements. So that's kind of how my braid's wired and it seems to work out pretty well for me. So I'm going to put up some overlays as well when we get into it. And you can see uh, kind of what I'm doing now. There really is no good overlay for a Thrustmaster joystick or any joystick for that matter. So I, I've kind of custom mapped some Xbox controllers to my joysticks. And you'll be able to see uh, how I move, the hat buttons I hit, my main four buttons, and my twist. Um, so bear with me on that. I just started doing that. So um, if there's any more like tips and tricks or people want to see that stuff more, I will definitely do it. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to head on over to the terminal and I'm going to pull out uh, a fighter and we'll go do uh, some kind of a dogfighting mission and uh, I'll see you there. Okay, everybody, so as you can see, I've pulled out my uh, Super Hornet Heart Seeker, and um, it's got a big revenant up on top, and it's got some uh, attritions here. I think I have three attritions on the bottom, so I have some ballistic, and I have some laser. Uh, the big gun being ballistic. We're going to go ahead and hop in the ship. It's one of my favorite fighters, because I'm just kind of used to it. Pretty used to how it handles and performs. So you can also probably see on the screen 
uh, in the left and right corner, I have a couple overlays, and those are the controller overlays. Um, and we get further out into space a little bit, we're gonna go over those. Let me take off here. So, first things first, you can see my speed limiter on the left side of the HUD. Uh, raising and lowering that right now. I have cruise control on, and, and I'll, I'll take it off. But my key for dog fighting, so th it's an SCM right now, this, this aircraft, right? It's right at that orange line. I usually dogfight right about two full clicks above SCM. So somewhere around here, maybe one down, uh, but usually right around there is where I would do the dog fighting at. Um, for the Hornet, that just happens to be right around 459 meters a second. Um, I don't usually stay at that speed when I'm fighting, but the reason I have it set a little bit higher than SCM is because I tend to use my afterburner when I fight to kind of make turns go faster. So I'm kind of performing some like a minimum radius turn when I turn left or right and that will enable like a little bit of boost, allow me to, to slide the back end of the aircraft around so I can face my target first, uh, or faster, I mean. Um, it's and, and a tip I had learned from uh, one of my friends, Gongzo, a, a long time ago is, and it makes sense, is you have to keep your enemy in your target area, right? I have to be able to point my guns at my enemy to destroy him. So... By by making sure my nose is on target at all times possible, that's the key, right? So making minimum radius turns, but then when I get on them, sometimes they can face me and they'll be shooting at me too, and that's that's fine. That's when I kind of use my left stick and my thrusters to maneuver a little bit and um, kind of go up and down, straight left and straight right. Um, thrust forward, thrust backwards, whatever gets me in the, the ideal situation um, where I can just lay down all my guns. Now, in this ship, uh, the the top gun is turreted, so if I was in regular targeting mode, and I, and, whoops, and I was shooting the gun, you see how the, the Revenant follows my mouse? That's in target mode, as you can see on the bottom right of the HUD. If I hit G one time and I go into lock mode, all my weapons are gonna fire at one location. No matter which way I turn, they're all centered in the middle of that crosshair right there. That's how I usually play when I have some kind of a mixed scenario. If I have turreted guns and non-turreted guns, I like everything to go to the same spot. I believe that was a 310 update in Star Citizen, and it's huge. If I do hit G one more time, I go into auto gimbal mode. And what this will do is my, my fixed guns, my three guns on the bottom, these lasers, you see how they kind of fire to the left and right? They don't fire in a central location. So I will end up having these weird pips show up. And the only thing that will actually move my gimbal around or my, my top third of weapon around is when I'm on target. And you'll see it'll move. So I'll do a little switching up and I'll show you the difference when we get into it. But if you have any type of mixed weapons, I highly recommend going into lock mode. And I'll show you once again, once we're in lock on our targeting, everything goes to the center of that reticle, which is exactly what we want, because we want all shots going in the same place. Um, you can see right now I am in coupled mode, which means as I'm moving forward, uh, if I turn, you see that little X that's moving from left to right right now? I don't know what that was, but that little X is my actual vector. It's the direction my ship is actually going. Now it's met up with the direction I have pointed my nose. But just like in real life, you know, right now, if you look, if someone were to observe me from outside the ship, they would see my nose is pointing down, but my, my ship is actually trying to compensate in that direction, and I kind of look like I'm sliding. I'll look like my nose is down, and, and the back part of my aircraft is kind of going forward a little, a little bit. If you can picture like a slide or a drift. Um, if you go into decouple mode, which you can do by hitting V... I'll maintain the speed, but I can turn. And you see how that X, the my velocity indicator stays exactly where it's at? That's because I, I am not moving in a different, even though I really am moving in a different direction. 
my thrusters and everything are not forcing the ship into a different direction. So I could, you know, so let's say you're jousting with uh, somebody and I'll turn on my cruise control and I decouple myself and I turn. See how my main thrust is gone? I'm still going right now. I'm going backwards, but I can fire this way. Even though I'm going backwards, see my thrust on to the left of my velocity meters a second, my indicator there, it's it's at zero. If I turn coupling back on, it goes back to 100. My speed goes down because I'm reversing thrust. And uh, I get C and it goes forward and I, my ship was stopped. That's why the, the little X didn't move. So let's try this again. I'll choose decouple mode. And then I will hit couple and cruise control. And we should see that now that my ship's kind of moving, my throttle goes down, goes back up, and you see my, my vector indicator, that X, kind of moved. Now I'm caught, caught all back up. I don't need any more thrust. I'm in cruise control. I don't need the extra thrust besides what my engines are providing. Um, the ESP and the G-Safe uh, down there by the coupled and gear indicator, I'm not going to touch on those today. Maybe someday I'll do an advanced video or something like that. I typically leave them on. Uh, a lot of people turn them off. Um, I don't even think about it because, uh, you know, maybe if I'm PvP or something, I'll turn it off. But uh, for right now, in first person mode, this is how I do it. I don't even overcharge my shields. A lot of people will overclock their shields, and that's great. But I have upgraded components on this ship, and I find that that's fine the way it is. Sometimes I will put all my shields to the front, especially if, uh, if I'm facing turrets. Uh, and the way to do that is under your number pad, you hit the 8 key. And I just hit that. Now down here on my shield display, you can see I'm basically going to double my shields on the front. Well, not double, almost double. I, I put a lot more power to the front shields. If I hit the four key on my number pad on my keyboard, I will do the same thing to the left shield. Um, you can see the front shield still has quite a bit of power. And then I hit the four key again, and it puts even more into my left shield. And then I hit it again, it puts even more, but it's taking from the other shields. Right, um, so I believe if you just hit five, it'll balance all the shields out at 100, and you know it has to go back up to its normal charge speed. But you you can use that to manage kind of shields, kind of like old school X-wing. Um, I usually just kind of leave them alone, um, and that's how I that's how I do things. Guys, well let's uh, let's get used to this uh, overlay here because even I'm new to it. Um, but when I move, if you can look at the overlay, you can see my hand on the stick and I'm moving left. You can see on the overlay that I'm also moving left and right. I pitch up, which for me is backwards. Pitch down is uh, moving the stick up. And then when I use my hat, you can see hat left, half right, hat down, hat up. When I use my fire, my, my main trigger, that's the A button, the green button. When I use my secondary fire, that's the X button on the Xbox controller. So primary and secondary gives me all my weapons. Get out of the sun there. Um, I do have the other buttons mapped in here. I don't really use them. I think that one's for comms. Yeah, that one turns on comms. And my missile button here is to the Y button, the yellow button. Um, so I only have one set of missiles on here, but uh, that's okay. Um, so my left stick, again, maneuvering thrusters to the left. As you can see on the overlay, I'm going left. You can see that vector indicator on the center of the screen. It's moving left as I as I strafe left. If I strafe right, it'll start to move right, just like that. If I if I uh, I'm gonna take off cruise control, I'm gonna thrust up. So now I got up thrust, and I'm going to my max. And if I go down, it'll actually like send my engines into reverse, and I'll slow down faster. Uh, maybe a little bit faster, maybe not. But if I throw now I have this key. As you can see on the screen, it says AFB under the thrust. So under the B button on the left controller, that is my afterburner. If I double click it, it's actually reverse thrust. So if I go forward and I'll afterburn, obviously I'll go faster. And then I'm good, right? And uh, when I when I throttle back, if I hit afterburn, I'll actually go faster backwards as well using my retro thrusters. And see, I'm actually having thrust, but I'm going backwards. So that's also, I think, key for, for dogfighting is, you know, 
moving forward, but it's also about moving backwards. You see, I changed my vector, and my ship has to catch up with the, the velocity. And then that's afterburner backwards thrust. And I think a lot of people don't know that when you strafe left and you strafe right, you can use afterburner to do that. You see, you see my vector indicator. It says left and right uh, arrows. Oh, that's afterburner on there. If I go left, regular speed, afterburner speed. So you can move left, down, up, right, forward, and backward, all using afterburner. Now, that is going to drain on your ship. You are going to be using uh, your coolers. That's why upgraded coolers are such a, a big thing and, and a big deal. Um, being able to have as much afterburner as you can. I, I say I'll probably use afterburner more than anything else in the game as, as far as uh, when I dogfight, just to maneuver around. You know, I'm coming up on a target and I'm throttling around them. And, and you can see on the, on the sticks, I'm kind of moving my sticks in all different directions. Come up on him. I'll pull back. I'll use afterburner. He turns. I turn. I turn into his turn with both the yaw of my right stick, my primary stick, and with my thruster. I'll turn and then I'll afterburn to just get a kind of slide around them and get on their six, um, and just so, so I can put my nose on target and just lay into them with my weapons. Um, what else? So maneuvering for me is key. Um, you're going to probably see when we hit an enemy that uh, they're going to be coming straight at me. Now, that's the current default AI in Star Citizen. These uh, these bad guys, the computer guys, they like to joust. So I usually get lined up with them, and I'm going full speed at them, too. And we can see, uh, you know, our, our, our uh, distance between us counts down, and that's fine. But what I'll do is I'll throw in a little bit of left thrust or right thrust, depending on the situation, and I may go up. And I may go down and I may do something, but I'll always be moving my right stick to keep uh, my target centered uh, so I can actually fire my weapons into the correct hip. Um, but I'll always be moving because if you let them, they will run straight into you and they're probably going to blow you up. And that's never fun to lose. So always kind of moving around a little bit and just angle my ship a little bit different, especially at, right at the end. Uh, if I can see they're going left or right. I will follow them left or right, and I'll, I'll do my thrust and my yaw into into their turn, into their direction. And then I'll sit there and I'll I'll, I'll put a rounds down range and on target. So, as I turn off my phone, I think that's about it for like preliminary instruction here. Um, mouse and keyboard, you can definitely fly with mouse and keyboard. You, you can dogfight. I don't think it's precise as a joystick. You can see how my mouse is leading around this reticle. I think there's, you know, it, it's fine. It works. Uh, there's a little bit of lag on it. What I use mouse and keyboard for is there's a lot of commands on the keyboard. When I'm not in a fight, I use mouse and keyboard to fly. Uh, I, I, my, my fingers are way too close to all the other buttons and commands. Uh, and there's no point that, that I need to have extremely accurate precision uh, when, when I'm just flying around doing stuff. And I'll hold down the W button like I'm doing now. And the S button, the A button, whatever, and do my strafe left and right. When I'm actually in a dogfight, that's when I'm grabbing my sticks. And you can see that little mouse lead went away because I'm using my joysticks right now. And this gives me, using the joystick gives you much more precision of putting those shots right in the right pit. So, uh, um, what else can we talk about dogfighting before we get into it? Uh, on the missile display down at the bottom right of the screen of, of the HUD, you see that I have Strike Force 2s out there, and that little weird Wi Fi signal that actually signals that uh, it is a cross section missile. Um, I believe the IR, the heat seeking, the infrared missiles have like a little fire symbol. And the EM or electromagnetic slash radar passive guidance missiles, I believe they have like a little lightning bolt. But the cross section looks like a little Wi Fi signal down there. Um, you can see on the bottom left of my HUD, under the G safe and ESP and coupled, I have my how many decoys I have and how many noises I have. Now it messes up with the display of my ship. You can't really see how many noises I have. I think it is five. Um, but there's not a lot. Those are basically chaff, right? And then there's a lot more decoys. So if I pump out a decoy, 
there we go. It's on my left stick. It's my left hat button. You can see my decoys go down. And if I'm doing this in third person, let's see, it kind of lights up a little bit. There we go. Get a little bit out. There we go. So there's a decoy. As far as chaff goes, I hit this chaff and it kind of creates this, or I'm sorry, the noise. It creates this weird noise field that I actually lose all my, all of my targeting. And any, any if I'm in this field, the enemies will lose their targeting as well as the missiles. So but remember, you have limited noise and you have much many more decoys. So a lot of people just pop out three decoys. And I have it set at one each. Um, you can change it in the settings of how many decoy and noise come out per button press. Um, anyway, let's... Uh, Let's head, let's find a mission and we will head out and I'll see you when we get in range. Okay, everybody. So we are now in country here with uh, our bad guy. The bounty is going to be showing up here, hopefully soon. You can see I'm about uh, 4,600 meters from him or her or whoever it is. Uh, oh, there they are. So they spawn in pretty quick. So now 8.8 8 .8 kilometers, and we're heading towards each other at high speed. Now, in this situation, I want to try to go above the asteroid. You can see that pip is moving. And now I kind of threw my side and hit afterburner. And now my pip is actually available, and I'm strafing left. I'm available to shoot him. You see, I hit, he's, his shots are mostly missing. And now I'm turning into him, throwing some afterburner in with some forward thrusts, taking some hits. But I'm moving around. I'm constantly moving around. But I'm trying to also pay attention to my surroundings, which sometimes I can do pretty well, sometimes not. This is an Anvil Valkyrie. Uh, they're pretty well armored. Um, but that's me using too much afterburner. The engines are overheating, or the cooling system, really. So I need to just kind of play this safe. All of his buddies have showed up, which means I'm going to probably take some hits. You see how I'm moving my sticks? I'm moving my thrustering stick a lot. And... A little bit of afterburner there because I was taking some hits, trying to get out of uh, their line of fire, and but still keep my nose on target. There he goes. He's lit up. So the first part of this mission is done. Now I'm going to mop up his friends. Make sure you take call to arms. So this guy, I'm already on a different vector. I throttle back, throttle up, right? It's, it's whatever helps you kind of turn. Uh, and the Gladys Valiant jerks around like crazy. There we go. Oh, so I mean, my shields are they're okay right now. And just always be moving. Always be moving. If you're static and you sit there and wait, then they're, they're going to find you and they're going to shoot you and there's going to be more than one person. So now let's find a guy that's fairly close. Okay, this is a, another Gladius Valley. So let's we joust them and we come back and we're going to turn around. I'm going to go backwards throttle. And I'm just doing this to get a missile range. Now we're going forward throttle. So very quickly. Oh, did I go out of range? Oh, missiles don't want to work today, I see. Oh, no matter. I'll just we'll just shoot them. We'll try it on the next target. I don't want to sit here and try for missile shots all day. Notice I'm not extremely precise with the joystick. But I'm in that area, and I'm close. The closer you are, the less accurate you have to be. But I still want to maintain kind of a, I don't know, 100 meter-ish distance. Now, there's a guy going pretty quick. Okay, let's go for DeWitt Cody here. Let's let's go ahead and joust him a little bit. We'll fly past him, and then we'll flip around and put our throttles backwards. And we'll get... Now we got some space. I am above max range for my missiles. Oh, they got some inbound missiles on me. So I, did I get some missiles out there? Yeah, I got a couple missiles out on them. They got me with that missile. But I got a couple on him too. Freelancer miss. I, I tend to stay more in gun range than missile range because now that missiles have a... a, a like an above max range and below minimum range, 
if I'm this close to the miss, I can't target him with missiles, but he can't target me either. Considering that ship is a missile boat, I know my target. He's not going to be able to target me with a missile, and I'm way more maneuverable than this guy, as you just saw. That's 1,200 UEC. It's probably going to be my repair bill. So now we are we have two more missiles left, and we have a Cutlass Black on here. Let's joust him a little bit. Make sure, oh, see, he hit me. He hit me. Because he, he pitched up. Let's get away from him. We're about two kilometers. Got my missile lock. My missiles are out, and I'm moving forward. Afterburner to get in range. You saw I, I just turned into him there. Used a little bit of afterburner to get around quicker. And he's toast. Toast. Another 1,200 UBC. So all in all, I don't know how much I made on that mission, but probably around 15, 16, maybe 17,000. Because it's just a local Hurston high-risk bounty. But, uh... That is, I guess, basic dogfighting in a, a fighter type of ship. So I'm going to make my way back to Everest Harbor, get repaired. I'm going to pull out uh, a bigger type of ship. I'll probably pull out uh, some kind of a prowler. And, well, I don't know. I'll pull out a prowler because it's, it's kind of slow, but it's not real slow. Um, it's, it's got really good guns, but it's, its maneuverability is much less. And then after that, maybe we'll pull out an even bigger ship and with even less maneuverability. Um, as we're quantuming, let's talk a little bit. So I think some really good advice here is you need to know the ship you're in. You need to know its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you can see this, this Super Hornet as we move around it, I didn't take any damage. Like, I may have taken a little bit of damage to something, but... Oh, my wings are both on? Right? My, my All my stuff's attached. Even my tailor spoiler's on. So I didn't take hardly any damage from that mission. And is it because I'm a good dogfighter? No. I think a lot of it has to do with... I know this ship, and I fly this ship constantly. It doesn't want to give me ever sorry. So I, I fly this ship all the time. I'm well aware of its maneuver maneuverability. I know, I just cut it. I fly it so much I feel how fast it turns. I know if I can make it, like if I'm headed for an asteroid, I need an emergency maneuver. I know I can turn my thrusters and my stick and then after burn out. I, I know how much it takes before I run out of coolant. And I, I start to overheat most times. Sometimes you're in the heat of battle, you don't think about it. But I just know how it performs. I know how these weapons perform. I, I know what distance I need to be to get the weapons to hit the target. Um, even when I'm not extremely accurate, as long as I'm pretty precise and I'm fairly close, I use it. And, and they hit. And I blow up people. And I think that's a key. I also... I play this game fairly regularly, and that means I know my enemies pretty well uh, as well. Um, I know that the Freelancer Miss is a missile boat, and I know it has poor maneuverability in comparison to a Hornet, very poor maneuverability. Um, so I know I can I can outfly him. I can, you know, that's a big thing when I fly the arrow and I dogfight the arrow. I don't have huge firepower at my disposal, but I can outfly almost anything else in the game. And that's a that's a big advantage for me. So you have to use your advantages to your advantage, and you have to fight with the strengths of the aircraft. Now there's a lot of talk of Sun Tzu and all that and attacking your enemy strengths and all that. But when it's a when it's a person, maybe that's true. But when it's just a computer you're fighting, I go for their weaknesses. I'm faster and more maneuverable. I'm going to outfly you. And that's how I'm going to get that kill. If I'm slower and less maneuverable, I have to be very calculated. Right? I'm going to hold back until I know I have that shot or I know that I'm going to get it. Um, I'm going to try to anticipate your movement better. I'm going to pay more attention to my surroundings because, let's be honest, uh, uh, 
Asteroid's going to take out the Prowler pretty quick. I know the Prowler comes with two Sukaran shields stock, and those are very good against enemies who have ballistics. So if I'm up against a guy or, or a pirate or whatever with ballistic weapons, and I see them shooting them at me, I know I could probably face them head on a lot better than I could in something uh, with like like the Hornet with a two size one, a, a Palisade and a, a FR-66 because those, you know, some of those ballistics are going to get through. And that's just how it is. So there's a lot of factors that go into knowing your opponent, knowing where you're fighting, paying attention to your surroundings, um, knowing the strengths of your aircraft, knowing the weaknesses of your aircraft, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of their aircraft, all that, it comes just with experience. But the basic maneuvers of, of flying around and outflying your opponent are, I think they're the same in general. And, you know, some people just can't dogfight. <laughs> some people are meant to be traders. Some people are meant to be cargo haulers. And that's fine. This game encompasses all those different philosophies. But something I like to do is dogfighting, and, and that's why we're having this tutorial. I hope the sticks are working there in the overlay. So let's go uh, put this Super Hornet away. And we'll scroll through the ship. Let's see if we can find a bigger ship here. Definitely don't want to do anything like the Carrick or anything because I don't have any pilot guns. Where is it at? Where is it at? I know, I have way too many ships. Um, Okay, so we're going to store the Heartseeker. Arrow, fantastic dogfighter. Um, the reason I love my Warden, I bought it with real money, is because it's the best flyer out of all the Vanguard series. And like I said, if I'm more maneuverable, I have a, I have a greater advantage over my opponent, you know? If they are shooting at nothing but space and not hitting me because I'm outflying their shots, that's a huge advantage. Uh, let's see, yeah. I don't want to rely on missiles or anything. Uh, we got, uh, hate the gladiator. Hate it. I don't want to get into EMP gameplay. That's, if you want to see that, watch my Hawk video when it comes out. That uh, we can be the Valkyrie. It's not very good for, for it's a multi crew ship. I think we're just going to grab, I don't want to grab a constellation because Ponies just have so many missiles. Uh, I think we're just... Yeah, I think we're going to go for the Prowler. I could grab a Freelancer. It moves like the Prowler does. Yeah, let me take a look at the loadout on the Freelancer here. This patch has a, has a weird habit of uh, ships that I have more than one of that moves around which ship is number one or two or three and the configurations get all screwed up so I'll pull out the wrong configuration so just okay just the basic freelancer I have a bunch of size threes a couple size twos okay I have upgraded components and rampart this is all size twos um, attrition threes okay so it's a full Oh no, it's a Gatling. Okay, so attrition three and a 220. And no paint on it, but that's fine with me. Let's pull out our Freelancer. Because the Prowler has two size fives and then two size three turreted guns. That's a lot of firepower. And I use it all the time as a gunship and not a dropship because I can take out a lot of stuff with those big shields and, and those big guns. Freelancer has less, but it's about as maneuverable as the Prowler. Um, but again, it's it's a multi roll type of ship. You know, it can haul cargo and all that stuff, so it's it's not meant to be what the what the Prowler is. So, uh, what are some other tips that I've learned from Gonzo? Um, and I might even play Gonzo's video, because it's pretty short. Uh, if he doesn't mind, I'll just include it in mine. Um, he has some rules to live by as far as, uh, you know, fighting. And let's see, if, if, uh, 
in any attack, seek to fire from the stern. So that means you are shooting to the back. If attacked, don't run, but turn into it, the attack. Uh, I advise that probably most of the time. Never forget an avenue of retreat. That's a, probably a pretty big one. Um, if you need to bug out and get out of there, then that's a good idea. And you need to know where to go. I mean, in, in space, there's so many different avenues of escape, but uh, you gotta go, you gotta go. Uh, no, you know, if your shields are getting real low and there's still like eight guys out there, it's probably time, you know, time to get out of engagement range and at least let your shields recharge before you go in. You know, you run out of ballistics and you're in a pure ballistic ship, get out of there. Uh, attacking groups, but always designate who will shoot. That's 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 some good advice. That's more for organization. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull up a mission, and uh, I will see you in space. So up, <clears throat> excuse me. Up now we have a video from my friend Gonzo, and. Uh, it's kind of a primer on his dogfighting and, and how to accomplish it. Uh, this is a, a little bit old, but the principles hold true for this, uh, both in player versus computer and against other players. Uh, he is a real life pilot, and I believe he was in the Canadian Air Force. So he does know tactics. He does know how to how to fight in real life in an airplane, and. Uh, Please relax, sit back, and enjoy his tutorial. The upper hand lies with the pilot who engages from a position of strength. Strength can be greater numbers, the element of surprise, or as this 3.10 example shows, speed. A more unique advantage that is prevalent in Star Citizen is the glare effect. As you can see here, the pit is very hard to find against the glaring background and you can hide very easily in the glare. Taking fire is a nerve-wracking experience, but if you let your opponent push you into a defensive position, you may never get back on the offense. Rather than turn away, side strafe or kite your opponent to throw off their aim while maintaining pressure. This is a very exaggerated but illustrative example. There are many systems in this game that influence your accuracy. Players have direct control over Enhanced Tick Precision, or ESP, G-Safe, Auto Gimbal, and PIP range system settings. Players have no control over the absolute precision positioning or projectile speed. The most complete and simple solution is to get close. As you see here, 300 meters is much more forgiving than 700 meters. As the saying goes, lose sight, lose the fight, and that truth is valid in Star Citizen. Think of a dogfight as a race between your DPS versus your HP. You want DPS to win before you run out of HP. Now view how much DPS you will waste looking for your opponent. Also, many heads up displays have bugs which hamper your ability to collect information. If you experience a HUD bug, don't PVP. 
the disadvantage is not worth it. Yes, the title is specifically chosen. Think back to the race analogy. From your opponent's turn, you can increase your DPS progress without letting your enemy race against your HP. Also, as your opponent reorientates, they may expose a pancake profile, their top or bottom, such as this, which is significantly easier to hit. Running away from an opponent already lined up on your tail offers no solution because they are still in position to tax your HP. Turning away from an opponent will not use enough of their agility to significantly help you either. Your best option is to turn into an attack because it is easier to counter an enemy you see rather than dodging what you don't see. Lady Luck may not always smile upon you, or you may bite off more than you can chew. If you need to escape, know where your escape is before you need it. If you think about your HP race again, you can save precious seconds of HP if you're not looking for the escape route. As you saw here, I used Glare to escape. And, as you are about to see, I returned to the engagement from a position of strength. Two sets of eyes are better than one for defense, and also mass fire will reduce your enemy's HP that much faster. From positions of mutual defense, your enemy will lose focus on someone, and that someone will likely be in position for an easy shot just like that. Take stock of the scenario presented here. I am maintaining thrust but not closing on my opponent. Instead, I am using strafe and royal to avoid their fire and taking a few judicious shots. When my opponent commits to attack me, I use my x-axis thrust to push at them. In doing so, I gain a disruption of their aim and control of the orientation and deliver severe damage. Once again, I begin at range with my opponent, using strafe to avoid taking damage. However, instead of using my X forward thrust, I use reverse X axis, Y axis, and Z axis to maintain my opponent in my sights. From here, I control the orientation and even may get some early shots on target. To read the conclusion here i just want to thank gonzo for letting me use this video um some very valuable information uh especially against pvp uh but still applies true for you know fighting against the computer so 
Okay, everybody, so we are uh, near our uh, rendezvous beacon. Uh, before I quantum to it, um, I just want to show that, yes, we are... Oh, that's a lot of sun. We are in the freelancer, the regular freelancer. Um, you can see that everything is tied to my left fire button. My primary fire button there is nothing for the right we don't have anybody in the turret um, maneuverability for the ship as you can see it's not great uh, it's it's kind of like driving a bus uh, the freelancer bus and uh, but it does have it does I got what four missiles uh, eight miss eight, eight missiles four size threes and four size twos so we'll we'll try to incorporate that to our advantage if, if we have the space. Otherwise, these guns actually two good size three lasers, two size three ballistics. Um, it's pretty it's a pretty potent combination. As you can see, that the weapons are tied to the side of the ship and they are on a gimbal, which means they can they can move because of where the gimbal's located though, uh, they don't always you know track super well. But that's the reason I am in auto mode on the bottom right of my HUD, going from target to lock to auto. Everything's gimbaled on here, so why not use the gimbal? So let's head to this location. We'll wait for our bounty to show up. And, uh, maybe after we get the bounty and we take on his friends, I will switch over to the different targeting modes and we can go over... You know how it looks in the different targeting modes. So we'll, we'll see if he, he shows up as fast as the last guy showed up. Now I'm in a bigger ship, and it takes longer to slow down, even with, you know, fully hitting the uh, the, the speed brake. So you got to be cognizant of that. You're going to turn slower. You're going to you're going to accelerate slower. And when you're near debris and asteroids like we are in this field, that that can be a major concern. You know, hitting something. And, it, and it, you know, when, when they when the enemy starts jousting you as well, then, you know, you have to be wary of that. So you definitely have to give yourself enough room to be able to maneuver uh, correctly. Um, while we're waiting for him to show up, uh, you can see my shields are at 100%. These are size 2 shields, so they can take a little bit more of a beating um, than those size 1s in the fighter. And it's a good thing because I'm probably going to take more hits. Uh, you can see that the Fleet Lancer is a fairly good sized ship. And obviously it's bigger than the Hornet, but it also means it has a bigger cross section than the Hornet, too. So while they can hit me from uh, bow to stern, from floor to aft, uh, much more, they can also hit me si on the sides with a lot more. So we're going to go ahead and target our enemy head towards him. I'm not going to use... See how my reticle is already moving towards him? That means those guns are... They're going to move by themselves. They're, they're gimbal for that. Now, I have a reticle. And I'm strafing to the left. Trying to get kind of out of his line of fire. Now I'm going to go to the right and forward. Trying to stay at a six using the afterburner. Always trying to keep my nose on target. And now I'm pretty much right behind him. We did not really have a joust because I'm, I'm in a such a slower ship. But look how quick I blew that guy up. Done. That was fast. That's that's what a gimbal weapon will do. I mean, it'll just it'll just tear him up pretty quick. Um, and I stayed on target the whole time. That's the benefit of that gimbal weapon. So let's switch our gimbal mode just to just to target mode. Um, I hate this because it. Because basically when you fire, it's going to move everything around. So I'm not going to do it. It's going to mess me up. I'll, st I'll stick them in locked mode. Um, the weapons do have different speeds, but um, you can see there's still a single pin. Because we're in locked mode, everything is going to fire forward. I guess maybe we'll try this. See, the gimbal kind of wants to follow it a little bit as I'm moving my stick around. But... Really, I really don't like this mode of fire. It does follow it, not that super well. I'm moving it manually with my stick. Yeah, this guy, this guy's not happy. I'm gonna switch the gimbal mode. So now you know what that looks like. 
taking some good hits from these guys. Again, I'm... Oh, there he goes. I am much less maneuverable than they are, so... What do I have at my advantage? I, I have missiles. I have size 3 missiles. So let's see if we can back up here and hopefully not hit an asteroid behind us. Or debris. We're in range, so we're going to lock some missiles on there. Firing. So he already put out his decoys. I think, I, mean, I think they decoyed the missile. So let's follow this guy around. He Now he's in a smaller ship, so he's going to be able to take less direct fire. So that's a, an advantage I know. So keeping our nose on target is probably our, our best bet, even though he's moving around like he's a high on cocaine. His ship can't make those movements, but staying on target, he, that's like... I don't know, almost like they don't even want to fire back at me. Sometimes. Oh, there he goes. He fires when he gets like a direct shot. But I've been firing the whole time. Okay, so what's this guy? Another Gladius. So let's kind of joust him. We got a clear... in front of us. Let's see if we can get a missile on him. Okay, we're on range. Firing. Okay, I saw a collision alert, and that's why I afterburned forward. A couple more missiles. Fire. They went after his first decoys. And we got him with a second set of missiles, so he wasn't paying attention the second time. And hey, that's that was all those missiles going nowhere. Those are the, those are the decoys. So, uh, that is a little bit larger of a ship. Um, we could get in something like a Carrick and do some turret work or something like that, but I think everybody has the general feel uh, for what I'm trying to say. Pay attention to your surroundings. Use the advantages of your ship more than the, your opponent. You know, know your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. Know your own and always be moving. That, that's my key advice. I give it to Jawa all the time. Uh, and he's learning. He's getting better. But always be moving. If you're going for a missile lock, don't stand still. You know, straight left or right. Go forward and back. Up and down. Whatever you got to do to kind of dodge incoming fire. I realize that your brain can only process so many things at one time. And that's perfectly normal. But if you can at least move your ship around a little bit while you target and get get in missile range or lock your missiles on or whatever you got to do doing that will you know hopefully confuse the enemy a little bit and give you a little bit more time to get done what you want to do and you know you shoot your missiles then you bam as soon as you shot those missiles off forward thrust and afterburner and go after them with your guns uh, you're not going to shoot your own missiles down unless i believe they're uh, like big torpedoes um, so this is a Fist 25 signing off. Hope you guys learned a little bit from this dogfighting tutorial. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if, if, if you have tips to make me better, uh, if you have any other tips for other players, please put them in the comments below. Um, we'll get a better community out here. More people being able to fly better is, is a good thing. Um, I'm not going to do a PvP tutorial. I don't play PvP very often. I don't like shooting other players I'm pretty much a law-abiding citizen most of the time and uh, I, I just don't really enjoy fighting other players sometimes my friends will we'll get together and we'll fight and, and it'll just be for fun when we don't get a crime stat doing it but other than that uh, fighting players is a whole different ball of wax that is there's way more strategies involved like using the sun to your advantage and, and knowing that when you're going into like a planet, it's hard for them to target you because of the way the targeting is set up in Star Citizen right now. And there's just way more strategy in fighting another player. And they're going to do things you, you can't predict. Um, and so you have to be able to adapt on the fly. The computer is fairly predictable with how they're going to fly, uh, how they're going to go about shooting you. And really the only way I think they can beat you is if, if you 
stay still. They're going to beat you. Um, they could possibly overwhelm you with numbers. Or if you're not paying attention to your own weaknesses, like if your front shield is down to zero, you don't need to be going head on with people and firing at them. You need to be turning tail and running until your shields can get back up and recharged or, or at least, you know, circling around an asteroid or something like that. So they, you know, they have to follow you and let your shields recharge. Then you turn around and, and unleash the fury on them. Those kind of smart play and smart strategies is how you're going to defeat the enemy. And uh, right now in PAX 312, you're going to make a whole lot of money dogfighting. I mean, I was up, I was up to about a quarter million an hour uh, when I was just focused on doing nothing but dogfighting. And I, and I was only restocking my ship maybe once or twice during that entire hour. So get out there and practice, have fun, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, everybody. So I was just talking to Java Sparky, and I was going to end the video. And, you know, he brought up a really good point that a lot of people in this game don't have a Super Hornet. <laughs> they definitely don't have a hard seeker or maybe they don't have a freelancer even though it's a starter ship and something that is a good idea is to show some dog fighting that can be done in one of the starter ships uh, like the Avenger Titan the Cutlass Black which I think are really powerful and a lot of people have them um, but I think more people have something like a Mustang Alpha or an Aurora MR those type of starter ships so I'm going to bring up uh, my in-game loadout of the Aurora MR um, because I like to fight and upgrading ships. Uh, the upgrades for the Aurora are pretty cheap. Um, but let's bring this up. Let's see what it looks like. So it has two size one missiles on it. Uh, I have a custom paint job, so yours might not look like that. Um, these marksman ones are infrared. I'm gonna swap those out with spark ones, which are cross-section missiles. There we go. Um, for propulsion, it comes with a stock drive, the EOS. I'm gonna throw my standard Atlas drive in there for my Aurora MR. For coolers, it comes with two hydrocells, which, which aren't like horrible. Uh, they are, well, they're pretty horrible. They're industrial D. But I'm gonna put uh, a couple of ultra flows in there for better cooling because we're doing dogfighting. We need to have performance. We have to think about this performance. You're not gonna go do a drag race in your minivan. I mean, maybe you are, but if you're out there doing a drag race, most of the time you want a pretty slicked out fast car. You want to win. And upgrading components on the ship lets you win. For a power plant, I will go with the small JS300 military uh, grade A for the shields. You know, most of the time in Aurora, I'll just shoot two FR-66s. But what I've found lately is one Palisade, which is industrial grade A, the most, the highest hit point pool, but the slowest to recharge. And with a military grade A, the FR-66, which is a good hit point pool and a fast recharge, it balances them out. And it lets me have a good shield pool. Um, as you can see, the left wing and the right wing don't have any guns on them. That, that's how this ship comes stock. But they are both size one mounts. So putting a gimbal on a size one mount, it's just smart because it does. You can't go to size zero for a weapon. So there's. You should always, if you have a size one mount, it should always be gimbaled if it can be. So I put two size one gimbals on. And since I already have GT210s, what I'm going to keep for the Gatling guns, for the, the left and right guns here, on my left wing and right wing, I'm going to put some attrition ones on here as soon as I can find them. And so now I have a, I have two size one lasers. I have two size one ballistics. And that's a pretty good combination. I also have two cross-section missiles. I guess I don't have stock paint. Uh, let's see how this paint looks. Kinda horrible. Uh, we'll just keep it stock. But I'm gonna save this build. So if you dogfight, I recommend upgrading components. Maybe you can do a little cargo hauling or something like that uh, before you buy these components. They're not that expensive. Let's pull out the RSI Aurora MR. 
the ship we just got fixed up here. And let's go let's go take on a dogfighting mission from uh, start to finish. And, and I I'm, I may take more damage. I probably will. I could even risk it blown up because the Aurora and the Mustang don't have very strong hulls like a Super Hornet or a Freelancer would. They definitely don't have the firepower of either of those ships either. But they're not. They're, they're starter ships. They're made to be the common everyday person ship. They're not meant to be, you know, uh, they're not. A, they weren't built to be a dogfighter. They were built to, what are we on, pad two? I mean, the Mustang was built to be a fighter, but it's built to be a very light fighter. Um, the Aurora is multi-role, so it's got a little cargo, you can do some box missions, a uh, little bit of fighting. And me personally, I'm not a big fan of the Aurora. Uh, I don't really like the shape of it. I think there is a ton of wasted space in the Aurora, and it's not as fast or maneuverable as a light ship like that should be. But... I'm not the game designer either. <laughs> um, I think there's... A, you can, like, deploy wings in, in atmosphere flight on the Aurora, and that would be super cool, but there's nothing like that. So but I do want to show that you can do these dogfighting missions in a starter ship. I don't... I just don't recommend doing them without, you know, having upgraded components. That's just the key for me. So, uh... Looking at the ship here, you can see there's our attrition ones, and I believe our Gatling, ballistic Gatlings are up front here. Yep, we'll go ahead and hop in the ship, and, and this is my favorite part of the ship, is this little back area. I think it's, I think it's pretty neat. And it does have a bed. So, nothing else though. It does have really good view, so you can see, you know, in front of you, you can see below you, that you can see above you that's really nice so definitely a better definitely better than a freelance so while we're warming up here on the pad i'm gonna hit g and i'm gonna go into auto gimbal mode you can tell by the dash circles and the reason is because every gun is gimbaled so if every gun's gimbaled you might as well use gimbals so we're gonna take off here track our gear here's up and uh, let's go, let's, let's find a mission real quick. With our contracts manager. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Uh, I don't want to do the group ones. Those are probably a little bit too hard for this. Uh, you know what? I, I, was, I wasn't going to do a, a high-risk target, but it hurts, but I'm going to do it. So if I get blown up, you'll see the limitations of this ship. But uh, let's go take out Kentaro Zimmerman here. Uh we can at least get him out of the way, and we might have to, if we get real low, we might have to leave uh, and recharge our shields or something for the, for the additions, but let's give it a shot. Now, for this type of mission, I didn't have to upgrade the quantum drive. Um, I believe a must before dogfighting is to upgrade the weapons, and I prefer repeaters. If you don't like repeaters, don't use repeaters. See how I'm moving my speed limiter? This one's almost three clicks. I'm going to move it down. So it's about two and a half clicks uh, above. And I don't fly this ship very often, so I, 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 you know, I don't know it as well as I know the other ships. 382 is pretty quick for this ship. Okay. I do like how the guy talks to you, the RSI voice. Now, the speed I'm going at... You know, for this dogfighting, we'll see if it works. It might be a little bit too fast. And and keeping in mind that this ship is a starter ship, and it's doesn't have a very strong hull. It's got the same exact shields as the Super Hornet does, but it, less weapons, all that. I, I kind of like the layout. I, you know, I miss having an Aurora sometimes. It's got a really good layout. Uh, of the displays and, and how you can see above and below and all that. It has the dual sticks, which is really cool. Uh, it's kind of reminds me of how I fly. Uh, if I do fly an Aurora, it's usually the LN, the Legionnaire Aurora, um, just because it's more combat capable. But here's our first bad guy. Okay. Whoa, maybe. 
maybe a little bit too fast at that speed, but we'll see. Try to get some missiles on him. Come on, Spark. Okay, we're now in range. Strafing. Okay, we let our missiles off. We're gonna turn into our target. Oh, another strafe. We're gonna turn into him again. Afterburner. And now we're pretty close to him. We're close enough for guns, for sure. We're gonna try to stay on his six. He has a shotgun. That's not good for this ship. It is an Anvil Hurricane. Sometimes you gotta take your eyes off the off the screen. And just like like a drag race. So I am taking some front damage. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of strafing. Oh, his buddies are here. Can I outmaneuver this guy? So far, not bad. I don't I can't really tell how much damage I'm doing to him. I don't have that top right display. All I have is the display on my dashboard. So right here, his buddies might might get me. He's getting awful close to an asteroid. Come on, Aurora. You got it, buddy. Let's get this guy. There he goes. All right. So, hey, we successfully completed the mission. So even if we blow up, we got 11 grand here. Oh, where'd that ship go? So, yep, sometimes you lose the ship. A little bit of desync. Okay, what are we fighting now? M50, so M50's really fast, and they really like the joust, but as you can see, they're super weak. What's this guy? This is an Avenger Stalker. One of my favorite ships, the Mighty Penguin. Um, a starter ship. We're really close. We're definitely in gun range. And look, we out, we pretty much outmaneuvered him there. Um, because we're in a little bit smaller ship, we took him out real quick. Okay, so looking for that target marker. There it is. It's hard to see. We're too close for missiles, but I'm going to throttle back. I want to try to get a missile shot on this guy. Come on. Where's my range? There we go. And now I'm going forward. Missiles out. Now I'm doing afterburner. So we did get that missile, and it did hit. A little bit of damage on that stalker. And see, he went up way quicker because I softened him up with, with missiles. I think something to remember with missiles is uh, you, you use them for two reasons. Either to end the target or to soften them up in the beginning. Rarely do you use missiles in the middle of a fight um, because, one, you, you're going to have to get in missile range. And sometimes that's hard. Oh, look, I'm fighting another Aurora. I was fighting another Aurora. And there you go, folks. A high-risk target mission in an Aurora MR... I have 100% on all my shields. Let's take a look at the ship. The ship looks in really good shape here. Um, I don't see any major damage anywhere. Um, bottom side looks good. I don't see any major damage or anything. Um, we did take some hits for sure, but we ended up coming out of it uh, out of an issue. So... I don't want to say I'm proud of myself or anything, but just goes to show you, you can, you can do, you can take a starter ship and complete these missions. Um, you saw, I kept the same rules that I've, that I've done uh, earlier, right? I, I, I kind of knew the strength and weakness of this ship, right? One of the strengths, gimbaled weapons. I have four of them. I use lasers and ballistic gatlings which gave me both types of damage, right? I knew I could do more hull damage with my ballistics, use those lasers to get the shields down and get a little bit of damage in. The combination of the two and four weapons is pretty good. I upgraded my shields. I upgraded the coolers. I upgraded the power plant. So everything works. I didn't have any type of low power issues. I don't think I even had a single warning for uh, for thrust, for over overpowering my coolers because I'm using too much after. Uh, the ship is nimble enough and more maneuverable than some of the ships I was fighting. So I, I was able to get around them. Uh, so I definitely use the advantages to this ship. Um, knowing the enemy ship, I've, I've flown those ships before. So I pretty much know how they maneuver. Uh, I've, I've fought the computer a hundred million times. So using the knowledge that I have 
I think we were able to show that, hey, I could probably do a very hard, uh, it's the same ships in a very hard, I think they have more friends or something like that. Now, I know for sure I could not do an extreme bounty hunting mission in an Aurora because you're going up against a hammerhead with uh, like a full crew, full turrets. And that's just, that's hard enough in a ship that's made to kill it, much less a starter, starter ship that is not specifically a combat ship. Seeing that major torque amounts does mean I took some hits to the, to the hull. Uh, so I didn't take anything major, like I didn't lose an engine or anything, but I did take some hits. I just, I, the reason I'm still going here is because I kind of want to show uh, how much the repair bill is going to be after doing one high risk mission, where I made probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 UEC. Uh, that took, what, all of less than minutes maybe maybe five six minutes from start to finish uh, taking the mission going out there doing it and coming back there was that torque and balance right there i just can't see anything it's so dark okay that oh oh that was wrecked the first time dropping my gear see i'm using i'm using the mouse and keyboard here because i don't need to use my joystick Keys are really close, I, you know. Come here, we'll even do an auto landing. Okay, and we have touchdown. Let's see how much this repair bill is going to be. Okay, 32 UEC for the repair. 418 to refill the ballistics and the missiles. And... What, 20 each for hydrogen and uh, quantum fuel. Which really, quantum fuel, I barely used any, but that's how the game charges you right now. So, I mean, basically 500 UEC to get the ship stocked up, you know, back to what I had. And and that's, that's still roughly 15 grand uh, in profit in a starter ship. Now you have to work your way up to those those high risk targets, but you know if you can do if you can you know obviously I did the high risk target. You can do the the very low risk and the low risk and the medium risk and then the high risk and then get up to the very highs and all that stuff. So the next ship, starter ship, Aurora MR. We easily, uh, well I wouldn't say easily, but we 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 managed to get the high risk mission done. It was fun. I had a blast. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial here as we make our way into Everest to store the ship. And we've already did the pointers and, and things to remember here. Uh, but I think I think I probably would have taken out the guy even faster in a Mustang Alpha, the other you know cheap starter ship, because that ship is made to be a fighter. Um, Definitely in an Avenger Titan with a size four on the on the nose and size threes on the wings. Definitely would have taken them out faster. A Cutlass Black with four size three weapons, um, more missiles. The Titan has more missiles. What's another starter ship? Technically the Pisces. Well, the Pisces. I have an Expedition, so I have four guns on it. But it would have been a little bit harder in a stock Pisces. Where's this guy jogging? What are you jogging to? To stare at the vending machine? All right. But uh, the Arrow is technically a starter ship. Uh, you know, the Arrow is made to be a fighter. Definitely a dogfighter. Very fast. Uh, so, where's... Oh, there it is. It's the MR. So I don't need to bring out a giant ship showing any of that or, or my Connie or anything like that because... You know, we, we showed you that in the Freelancer. Um, we showed you a light ship, uh, or a fighter ship. We showed you a, a light uh, starter ship. You guys can do this. Have confidence in yourself. I die all the time in Star Citizen, and that's okay. Um, get better, practice, and good luck out there in the verse. If you ever need some backup, call on Fist25 or Jawa Sparky, any of the Sons of Valhalla. And we'll see you out in space. Good night, Sam.